Okay, Mike, say hello to Kimar. I thought since I don't have this guy for too much longer, I might as well give you a tour of, of what I'm dealing with here. Uh, I have Kimar in this kind of high chair right now just, just for hooking up. But as you can see, he's full torso, and on the back side, he's got this little uh, connector here. Um, I put this on to protect those connectors while I've got him. But there's the name, Kimar, to prove it's really a Kimar. And... Uh, there are these connectors here, and I'm using the, those are multi-pin connectors there that go to the Keymar's custom preamp. There's a power supply here. I don't know what that's for. It could be for the option, which, which lets them have a microphone in the mouth, but as you can see, this Keymar has no option for a microphone in the mouth. Um, the ears are very good, but uh, because in hearing aid testing, they don't need stereo, so the ears are slightly different from one another in the size of the opening. You'll notice this has a fairly generous hole. The rubber is uh, fairly pliable. Uh, nice. And there's a very small, I wonder if I can show you this, very small tube. Here we go. This little metal tube has to go into the ear canal um, for some reason or another. I don't know why it's not a permanent fixture, but... That's in there, and, and the mics are down at the end of that canal. So no, it's a sealed unit. You can't, I don't think we can even see the mic. Uh, you can see a grill in there. You can't, I can, but um, but there's, there's mics in there. I'll try to find out what they are. And uh, here we go, we'll put the ear back on. The ears are simply uh, pressure fitting over the, the little hole, and they just kind of, you can see there. And now the, the reason I say they're slightly different, the ear themselves themselves seem to be the same. This seems to be a little bit thicker, but the hole is smaller on this one. It's a smaller hole, and I have a feeling that's meant to be a female ear canal entrance. I don't know what the, I'm not sure what the idea is of that, uh, even when they designed them, what the concept was. And that ear doesn't fit on quite as well either, and there's no other way to fit it. So um, that's Keymar, and I mentioned all the stuff that he comes with. So he comes with uh, this power supply. This is what I was mentioning is really kind of ridiculous. This power supply is just a standard <clears throat> 15 volt DC AC to DC converter because it happens to have this. It was designed for 220, like for Europe. Maybe it came from France. It, they they have this 110 to 220 <laughs> transformer because uh, they have to accommodate this power supply, but the power supply is just, a, just a super inexpensive power supply, nothing special. So I don't know why they don't just buy a 110 or a switching power supply. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's university mentality at its best. And then uh, over here, Ethan, be a touch be a touch. There's Ethan, he's helping me today. Ethan, say hello. Say hello, say hi. And then uh, here is this unit here that I'm using. This is the Keymar's uh, custom little power supply box. It appears to be a preamp and probably providing phantom power to those mics. Pretty simple affair. There's just my, there's gain adjustments there. And then again, these multi-pin connectors. And uh, in an act of uh, sort of another strange component are these... these uh, BNC connectors. Now, luckily, Paul, my, my engineer, he once made up for me because I have a Sheps preamp which has these same BNC connectors. So I've got these uh, BNC to XLRs to run this into the into the uh, port of that. And, uh, and then I'm using this, this guy for just for monitoring with headphones because of that bizarre headphone problem. I have yet to solve why I have that problem. Anyway, uh, and I'm using a battery built to power the HHB simply because DC is clean and uh, Taiwan's power is sometimes notoriously dirty. Um, okay, that's all for, uh, for now. So I'll be doing this testing with, with Kimar. I'll be uh, using him and then I'll be using these DPA mini mics. As I mentioned, these are the 4060s and they're super tiny. I just want to show you the head on this to give you an idea. And look how small that is. Is that cool or what? And they sound great. And what I've been doing is I've been taking these guys and I've been feeding them into the hole, originally into the hole and out the back of the 
plate, but I find that I can actually go in and out of the hole and have the cable looping inside the tube. And that works even better. So uh, I'll be doing that later and I'll just create a, a constant series of tests using the same cues, same positions, and that'll give us an idea. And then later, when I modify these ears, I'll be trying these out. These are the slightly larger ones. And I, you mentioned in your email you thought there wasn't enough detail. I think they're okay. Uh, key Mars are, are different, but um, yeah, because these are white, they're a little hard to see. But I think these are pretty good. They're probably about as good as yours. Those hawks that you bought, they won't quite fit. But I, if I get the the correct ears in time, I'll try these. Otherwise, I'll put them on my other head. And uh, but unfortunately, they sent two of the same ear. These they got right, but these are really bizarre. Look, they even stick to the plastic. Look how sticky these are. I mean. They even stick to my fingers. They feel like Play-Doh, but they won't... I can't change their shape, but they're very strange. And they're smaller, too, so I don't like them as much as these. I think these will give a better result. Okay, Mike, that's it. That's your uh, binaural tour. Say bye-bye, then. Oh, yeah, he's nice and noisy when I'm talking on the camera, and then he's super quiet when I'm looking at him. All right, Mike. So there's your Christmas uh, Christmas tour of Kimar. Talk to you soon, buddy.